Okay, I'm gonna stop share for a moment. So just to say hello and be able to look all of you in the face for a minute. Um, Joby, thanks for the introduction. Thanks for asking me to come back again. Actually, I think I was the second yeah. uh, presentation when you all started this. Yep. And um, we talked about the change cycle then. So we were early in the COVID uh, debacle. Um, so, cause I think that was probably April. Maybe. Yeah, it was actually just the second so, week of May, Lily. Yep. Yeah. So uh, uh, thanks for asking me back. I don't know how many of you were here for, for that particular session because I ran through the whole change cycle at the time. Um, we don't have time to do that and sort of address some different issues tonight. So um, I'm gonna uh, uh, give you a little bit of a, uh, a run through with the change cycle. It's gonna be very, uh, very quick because I want us to focus in on a particular part of the change cycle that I think might be particularly helpful with where we are right now um, in, in, in a world that seems to change just about every day. So um, uh, that's kind of where we'll go. Um, the focus of that, which you'll see in the beginning slide uh, here is, um, a place in the change cycle where we say that you either break down or you break through. There's a particular spot where um, if you choose to do a certain number of things, it will send you back to the beginning of the cycle and that is the beginning of a breakdown. Or you can do a set of things that helps you to pass on through that spot and we call that the breakthrough. And we know that even though you're not finished with the cycle at that point, the, the percentage chance of successfully completing the cycle goes way up um, if you can just get to that breakthrough point. So um, I, I thought it might be helpful if we could examine that a little bit more closely um, tonight, okay? So um, Joby, if you could watch for me any things in the chat and stop me if I need to answer something or, um, and so feel free to put those questions that you might have in the chat box, okay? Absolutely, Lily, and I was just gonna say that if anybody would like a question or even a comment, if you go ahead and put those in the chat box, we'll scrape those. And Lily, I'll do something really high tech and just wave at you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know, perfect. What's going on, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm susceptible to waves, so that's good, <laughs> that works. All right. Um, oh, I think I'm missing a slide. Oh. I've got breakdown versus breakthrough, then the change cycle is next, and the yellow stages are next. Yeah, I'm missing the whole change cycle there. Okay, let me, how about if we go back and I will, it's right there. Okay, I'll stop, share, and you do it. I'll do it. How's that? How's that? <laughs> okay. There's <laughs> teamwork. Look at that. Pivot go. and team. Boom. Oh, that is, but I have shifted my screen since you and I chatted. How's that? There we go. Okay, so what you're looking at is uh, the change cycle model. And so this is what my business partner and I have been doing now for about 30 years. Um, and so just a couple of things I wanna tell you about the model. Obviously it's a circle, which is about, it is to intimate what uh, Joe was talking about in the beginning, you know, that there really is no beginning, middle and end in the real world change is forever and ongoing. What is also true, is that when we're in the grips of it, we desperately want it to be linear. We desperately want there to be a beginning and an end. And we want somebody to tell us where it starts and where it stops. And so it's important to be reminded that in the end, it's always um, cyclical. Uh, the model is actually based on uh, neurology about how our brain responds when we experience something new. So our working definition of what is change is always um, the experience of something new. It really is pretty simple in the end. Um, and so uh, we have done all the research. Um, we did it many years ago and we continue to update it about how the brain responds when you and I experience something new. Um, so. Uh, the model represents the three parts of the brain. So that's why there's three, that's why there's a brain in the center. And then um, hopefully you can see my cursor here. The first two stages, loss and doubt, are part of the primitive brain. And this is when we go to our very basic way of functioning. So something completely new comes into our experience and we 
we have to develop a whole new set of neuro pathways in our neurology system. And so we kind of go back to very basic brain functioning. So that's why um, if you feel like you're not very smart sometimes in the beginning of a change process, it's because it's true. It's because we, we have to go through a process to sort of get smart and to get all of our neuro pathways working like they need to. So the first two stages, let's go back. Joe. Okay. It was the puppy, uh, Lily. It was the puppy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nameless, the no-name puppy. Uh, so so the, the first two stages, loss and doubt, are really very primitive responses to something new, but very essential. Then stages three and four is the second part of our brain that is responsible for our ability to put words on things, our ability to make perceptions about what's happening, our ability to put together a picture, um, to organize our thoughts. So stages three and four use that part of our brain. And then stages five and six, this is the place we always want to be when we start out. Got to go back. Um, is to stages five and six. Uh, we'd like to go from zero to five and six very quickly and skip over all the rest of it. And, and yet uh, with our brain, it actually happens in an order. So it's important to do the red and yellow stages so that five and six can, can go more smoothly. So um, that this is, the basics of the change cycle. So there's six stages, lost out, discomfort, discovery, understanding, and integration. You can go on to the next slide now. So what we're gonna talk about tonight are stages three and four. So this is where you can see that uh, there's a little uh, pie sliver <laughs> between stages three and four called the danger zone. Um, and the danger zone means that Oh, sorry. It's that we make it's choices, funny. that we make choices in stage three that do not get us to the breakthrough. And um, we make choices that will end up causing us to go back to stage one and start over. That is the condition we call the danger zone. Uh, we sometimes call it the danger zone waltz, where you go back up and start over. One, two, three, one, two, three, lost out discomfort, lost out discomfort. That's the danger zone waltz. So that's what we're trying to avoid. That's what you that's what breakdown looks like, is that I'm just sort of cycling around over here on the right side of the change cycle. Stage four is the place we're trying to go. And once that happens in our brain, then we call that a breakthrough because after that things get uh, much easier. Okay. So the, that's the part we want to focus on uh, tonight is this, this sort of journey between stages three and four and the choices that we get to make. Now, I want to show you a little bit about, just to give you the experience, um, I'm going to have, uh, just a second, Joe, not quite yet, but I'm going to have her put up a series of pictures. I'm going to put up a picture. We're going to let you look at it for about 30 seconds. And when you're looking at it, I want you to start making up what you think might be happening in this picture. Um, and these will represent what it looks like in our brain uh, for the first four stages. Okay, so you can put up the first one. Okay, so this is about all you can see in stage one. So this is the new thing that's happening. This is about all you can see. So if you saw only that, what do you, how would you fill in all these white spaces here? You can just say this to yourself. You don't have to say it out loud. Okay, put up the next one. All right, that's stage two. You get a little bit more. You can see a little bit more. Stage three, go ahead. Ah, so we get, get a get, but good bit more here, right? So you might be asking yourself questions like, Whoops, whoa, well, <laughs> puppy. go ahead then, <laughs> go to stage, go to the next one. Okay, so you see we get a lot more by the time we get to stage four, you see how that works? So our brain is exactly like this, that we're getting pieces of the puzzle all along the way. And um, 
it's interesting to imagine what is missing there, what's in that spot. But for the most part, we can see the whole picture. And that's kind of the place I want us to talk about tonight is how do we, uh, if you'll back up one, Joe. I'm sorry, Cheryl. Sorry, I'm sorry, Lily. Back up one. Um, see what a difference when you add that one extra piece uh, to this picture, how much more you get, what a, a, a much greater sense of what's going on that you get than you do right here. So this is this place where yeah. we imagine what is happening in this picture and we either break down or we break through. So that's the part we want to uh, work on tonight. Okay, so. So I wanted to just sort of, you can go on to the next one. I wanted to identify for us what I think is happening right now and is a perfect storm of things uh, right in this moment um, where we are living between an election that has happened um, and inauguration day and a new administration. So there, there is a lot of uncertainty in that time. Can we all agree? It doesn't matter our political persuasion. Can we all agree <laughs> that there is a lot of uncertainty in these, these months, these days between an election and the new administration? Uh, normally, we don't feel all that uncertainty, but we certainly are now. Then there is the uncertainty that lies between a surge in the virus and a vaccination. And by the way, I'm trying to uh, clarify here, not, not, a, not between a surge and a vaccine, but a surge and actually getting the vaccination, okay? Um, and then there is this uncertainty between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So we're about to face, you know, living through Thanksgiving and Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and having to do it an entirely different way. So there's an uncertainty for us all in that way. So all wrapped up in a very short period of, of months, we've got all of this going on, okay? That seemed true to everybody. Everybody kind of go, yeah, yes. I can see that, all right. And the truth, I think what's fairly true is that because these are such big things happening in our world, um, it affects all of us. It doesn't affect just a few of us or affect other people besides us. It affects all of us in some kind of way, these three things. So, um, so that's, that's why I chose these. So a couple of things I wanna point out about them. The biggest one is um, these are all happening outside of us and they all are things over which we have very little control, all right? The third one, what happens between Thanksgiving and New Year and how we manage that, that one is a little more in our control. But the other two may totally affect the third one. Does that make sense to you? I mean, if the, if the virus keeps surging, then what we do about this time between Thanksgiving and New Year is gonna be impacted, right? Um, if, <laughs> depending on how crazy this time between the election and the inauguration, you know, that could also impact what happens for us between and during this holiday season. So, um, so, but, but what's interesting about it is that most of this is outside our particular control. They're happening, they impact us all, and we have very little control over them. That normally leaves us feeling, uh, you know, pretty uneasy um, when, when we're so profoundly affected by something that is outside of our control. All right, can we, can you pull me back out into the group? Like that? Yeah. yeah. So I just want to check in for a minute. So how does it feel to just sort of see that on the screen? Yeah, like these three things, Who who's having any kind of response to that? You know, Lily, I'll go if you have no one going to jump in. Oops. Just for us to chat. Who was that? Sherilyn, was that you jumping uh, in? This, this is Carolyn. Okay. I was asking if you 
Yes, if you want us to chat in the box only or questions. No, I'm just, I'm asking you, do you have a response to seeing those three big things that are largely out of our control, but impact us a lot? I mean, just what does it feel like to see them on the screen for me to say them out loud? I felt it in my gut. I, I, <laughs> just, I somewhat tightened up. Mm -hmm. It's like a little sucker punch, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Uh, Lily, it's Glenda here. I actually am not an American, mm -hmm. um, but it's affecting me by association. Yeah. Um, an awful lot of my good friends are in your country. And of course, the media, you can't turn a station without finding more political current stuff. So, yeah, clearly there's an association to the events that you listed. Yeah. No, and no. you have the other two either way, right? Well, well we you have okay. the other two either way, right? Well, we don't have your Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. Um, right. and that's and our 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 surge is less surgy than your surge. Well, that's the truth. That's why we all want to move to Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll, we'll make room. <laughs> yeah. Y'all yeah. need to clear some of that space up for some Americans, I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, Lily, I'm going to jump in since the time you and I chatted this afternoon about this and, and we put these, you know, slides and the concepts together. Um, we got in word a couple of days ago that a neighbor of ours who's elderly um, got COVID and was sick and was taken to the hospital. And um, at dinner time tonight, we learned that he had passed away. Oh, my. And yeah. Um, yeah, and it's I mean, I could I walk by his house every day with walking the puppy and he's kind of just kitty corner to my mother's house. And um I'm just pissed, you know, the emotions of the, the shock, the sadness, all of that. Um, but it just came up as an anger for me tonight in a way that is a teary anger, but like a really, um, I'm just pissed. And I, um, there's nowhere to go with it. Like, it's not anything, I, there's nothing to do about it. It just is, but in a three or four day window, you know, my neighbor and that house changes and his wife changes and it's done. It's, um, yeah. and I'm just, I think it, I think it's tinging back to my dad, to losing my dad. Yeah. Um, Makes so sense. it's, yeah, tapping back into other um, loss. Yeah. yeah. A little surprise. We didn't, you know, we're not like best friends with that family, but we see them most days, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, in the, in the United States, I think that what's happening is that COVID is getting closer and closer yeah. to all of us. Yeah. You know, that we are all starting to either know someone who's really sick or know someone who's died and, the, and how we know them keeps getting closer and closer in. Absolutely. And you know, so, so that's one of those changing tide, the changing tide under our feet um, that, that really makes us feel uneasy for sure, yeah. Anything else before we go on? Um, I think it's also that it, it, there's not like a black and white answer. So when I think about the virus and the holidays, um, you know, just over the last week, my family as expected shared that we're not gonna do the two dozen people crammed into the, you know, tiny little table. And so that was canceled. And then I found a place for me to go with a, a family that I have been seeing and then I learned that they're inviting more people over and now I have yet to decide if I'm going to go or not so I'm stuck right now in a place where like I thought I had the answer and the situation changed and I don't you know it, it quite possibly could change again in the next week that's so right it's yep. yeah yeah thanks yep. and and um Lily Aaron is saying in the in the in the chat box that first the slides were anxiety producing and then Aaron, if you want to share, just shared that you just got scared for the first time this week of actually catching COVID. Yeah, I don't know why it hit me this week, but it's just, I think you just described it, Lily, it's getting closer and closer. And I'm realizing I don't want to have this affect my health in the years ahead. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm really guarding my who I spend time with which is basically nobody um because I don't want this and I'm realizing I've been healthy my whole life and I don't want to give that up and yeah. it's starting to really scare me yeah 
Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I want to tap into something Joe said too about about the anger, which which Aaron may be in there a little bit for you too. The the of of uh, even if I did everything I could do, every, lots of other people didn't. And, and so that has impacted me in ways I had no control over. I mean, we're back to mm -hmm. that whole, I, what, what I don't have control over. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we like to have some modicum of control over things. Right. And so, so th this is, this is sort of uh, unbelievable that we have this stacking of things that over which we have very little control. However, tonight, I want us to see if we can work on what do we have control over? Mm -hmm. Where where are our breakthrough points, you know, that that actually I do have control over and that I can do something about, okay? So um, you can start putting the slides back up. The, the way I want to do that is, is actually a, a, a business um, tool that some of you are probably familiar with called the SWOT analysis. And SWOT is S-W-O-T, and it stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And so um, the Strengths and Weaknesses part, I'm going to kind of jump over for, for our purposes tonight. Um, and I want to invite us to see if we can work on naming what our opportunities and threats are, even inside these larger things over which we feel like we have very little control. Um, I put up something just from, from my own experience, just as an example, that despite all I have no control over, um, I have discovered that there was an opportunity in here for me to find new ways to teach and train. I mean, it's in part what I do for a living. Uh, otherwise, I'm the pastor of a church. So trust me, you know, Ken Martin, after all these years preaching to a screen is not an easy thing. <laughs> And so, you know, but, but, but I could, you know, there's a choice to make about whether I will see that as an opportunity to be creative, to learn some new things I didn't know before, um, to practice differently. Um, so that, that's one of those opportunities for me. Um, interesting ways to use my space at home. Um, so I happen to have a pre-existing condition that makes me very susceptible. I'm, very healthy, but I just happen to have a, a thing that happened to me some years ago that makes makes me very susceptible to the virus. So I have literally been at home for eight months. So I've had to get really creative with my home spaces um, and what I do with them and how I utilize them and how I choose to see them. And then new ways of buying and using groceries. I thought this might be a fun one for you. Um, like we have our, our groceries delivered and I also have noticed that we've gotten much better at knowing how much to buy of a thing, um, what we're actually going to eat versus what we think we might eat. Um, I mean, that, that we have really honed our skills around our buying groceries, you know. And um, in fact, I think saving money because we're getting better at buying groceries. So um, just, just a weird little thing, but, but uh, it, it's an opportunity that's been a plus. Um, threats for me. Um, I'm guessing I'm not alone around weight gain. I mean, it's an easy thing um, as we're sitting at home. Um, I could, one of the threats was to sort of give up on training for a while. I mean, the truth is, I don't have to do it all the time, right? It's not something I have to do anymore. So I could just give up on it since this is it's just too hard. Um, and I could also choose to suffer with being at home all the time. Um, so those are all things that I would say are threats to me in any given moment. But I get to choose whether that's the route I'm going to go or whether opportunities are the route I'm going to go. Okay, And the threats will break me down. The opportunities are the things that will help me break through. That's really just the bottom line. And um, so choosing well in this environment we're in with that stacking of things we're talking about is everything. So I don't mean to be overly dramatic, <laughs> uh, but, but I'm saying whatever things I have control over, I wanna encourage all of us to have control over them and choose well uh, with regard to them because we'll come out of this better. 
Um, so you can uh, go on to the next. We've got this slide next, Lily. Yeah, so this is, there's a choice to make, so choose well, and you can you can go on to the next one. So I want, I want to have you all, I saw, is that, the, okay, so this is the choose well place. You can go on to the next. Yep, and then I've got this again, and then I've got this. One more, going there you go. There yeah, you go. so I want, because I want you all to practice, all right? So, um, so I want to give you, I'm, we're going to put you in breakout rooms, but when you get there, um, just work by yourself for maybe a minute or two uh, and choose one uncertainty and list opportunities and threats. So if you wanna choose the virus, if you wanna choose the holiday season, if you wanna uh, want to choose the election, um, or you may wanna choose something else, but choose an uncertainty that you're living in that's beyond your control and then list the opportunities and threats inside that. Then share those with your group. And then as a group, I want you to determine what this is teaching you when you look at these opportunities and threats, when you actually write them down and look at them, what is it teaching you? Okay, does everybody understand what I want you to do? Yep, and Lily, we've got 21 people. So would you like three to a group or four to a group? What do you think here? Let's do, well, uh, yeah, let's do four. Okay, so I will begin to build this Okay. while you keep talking about exciting things. Erin, you already are an overachiever and you have your SWATs already in the chat, so you can just do a cut and paste there, my friend. <laughs> um, I'm going to assign those automatically, four, so five, so six breakout rooms Okay. divided by 21 people, right? Someone give me some numbers there. So... That will give us three and a half per, so three to four in each one. Yeah. Or would you like five breakout rooms and have four to five? I think let's let's do with the six because that way if we'll have time to chat. How long? How much long? Yeah. How how long would you like to have them? I'm going to give you fifteen minutes. Okay. Let's see. Options. You want 15 in there. That's going to take us almost to the end of the hour, Lily. Oh, it is? Well, I have 8.33. Yeah, you want to go, let's just... How about 10? 10? 10 is good? I want to have them, I want them to have time to actually do All this. Right. <laughs> We're going to give you 12 plus a 60 second countdown, my friends. And that way, I'm going to open the rooms. I think you should just head there automatically, okay? And there's also in your rooms, there's a little panic button if you need help. And Lily or I will... We'll try and jump in if you need help. Lily, I think you're actually going to a room. So you should be joining breakout rooms now. Ken. There we go. Y'all, that is, this is my um, other personality. So even though I'm in your room, I'm gonna wave on and let you three talk and manage the rest of the group, okay? But you're a very good looking group there. Enjoy. Thank 
came back uh sorry jo i got i i didn't know who had frozen or what had frozen i'm sorry so i missed the last section in group four that's okay you got in with aaron that's cool huh yeah cool. Had a good group and um are they still aaron, in the groups they are yeah if they'll they'll come back in a, in a, just a minute okay you can take oh, i'm sorry because i missed one of the people um i don't know why it froze because it said the internet was still connected oh well i wonder if i can put you back um you were with yeah i can put you back for 30 seconds head back in there <laughs> see ya <laughs> And a few of you are sneaking back in. Welcome back. It depends on if you're familiar with breakout rooms, right? Um, Ken and Chris are back. Chris, I'm not sure I said hello earlier tonight. Hello. Hello, hello. Hope you all had a great conversation. Tom, I could hear you guys from the from the other bedroom. <laughs> An opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, I let them, I let you all go in there automatically. And I think, Cynthia, are you, Cynthia, are you in Michigan or are you in California right now? I'm in Michigan. Okay. I thought you were in California. I'm thinking the two Californians, Eric, you're from California, right? <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah he. But that's he fine. I, that's just one, one thing that I've discovered 
even though the negativity <laughs> of the COVID, we've learned how to communicate across the country. <laughs> and across oceans and across time zones, Eric. Yeah, Absolutely. And I was just yeah, telling Cynthia, puppy. where There's would we be? There's another puppy there. Mean otherwise. Do you have puppy? I'm, I'm sorry, Eric? We wouldn't meet otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Lily goes back. Michigan, to I'm in California. Joe? Joe? Yes. Have you heard this news yet? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have. You remember George from your cruise? Absolutely. Yes, he, I had dinner with George. He died Saturday night. Oh, my goodness, Cynthia. Oh, dear. So oh. it's been a really bad weekend for me. Oh, honey, I'm glad you're here with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. sitting wow. in this, sitting in this 2,400 square foot house all by myself, yeah. and at least George and I talked every two days. Now, oh. they're they're saying he died from COPD, but his daughter is going to try to have more testing. We think he may have gotten COVID, and yeah. because of his low immune system, just died in two three days. Mm -hmm. Oh, Cynthia, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. We had uh, that's. And thank you for sharing. We had dinner with George. I had Cheryl and I had dinner with him every night of the cruise. He sat at yeah. the table. So, oh, honey, he, he took me. He took me to MCC in 1972. There you go. <laughs> wow. We were we were friends for 55 years. Yeah. Oh, wow. I told my pastor Michael that I said I was with George when the astronauts walked on the moon. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I said, Michael, you know how those big experiences. You remember where you were and he looked at me and he went cynthia this was on zoom of course i wasn't born yet <laughs> oh, 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 dear. oh man <laughs> those stories stay around this church my friend you know that you these stories yeah. and the friendships do for for good lily that's the only yeah. thing to think about right is the whole I, we were talking this afternoon a little bit of grief and and um kristen like you said it's like when you think where am i going to spend thanksgiving who am i going to spend it with if and then should I, you know, our family, I guess most families are right. probably having that conversation right now. Is it and, and Cheryl, of course, went out and bought a 17 pound turkey that apparently we're going to eat for a long time <laughs> starting next week. Oh, dear. <laughs> she had great dreams, and then the governor came on and said, Well, maybe not so much. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but there's an opportunity there, right? How many, how many open faced gravy on turkey sandwiches <laughs> while you're losing gaining weight? You know, how many can, how many, how many is too many, right? <laughs> I, I saw a recipe for a breakfast turkey dinner breakfast. It says turkey <laughs> dinner breakfast. I like, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Post it on the chat, please. We're going to need it. <laughs> All right, back to you, Lily. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I know we need to sort of head ourselves to the end. So, you're okay. You're okay. Um, mostly, I just want to, um, I want to remind you that um, in the change cycle, the stage three, that breakdown place, is usually so distressing for people because it seems like despite our best efforts, it's not turning out like we want it to, you know? Yes. And whatever the change, whatever we hoped this change would bring, it just doesn't seem to be doing that. And so the truth of the matter is with all that we've got going around us in the world, um, I think it can feel like that a lot. So um, here's how I want to encourage you about that. Um, educators tell us that, um, that at the point of greatest confusion for a student, what is right after that is learning. And so I think that that's what we kind of have to hold in our hearts and, and we have to keep in the front of our minds is that when we feel the most angst the greatest sense of confusion, the, the tendency to want to give up and to just throw it all in, that we're actually just this close to the breakthrough, Yeah. right? We're just this close to the other side of it. And so for all of those things that we have control over that we can make choices about, we're probably just this close. So I'll leave you with a story. Um, uh, Diane and Nyad may be a familiar name to some of you. She was a a long distance swimmer. She won the gold medal oh, Olympic, yes. Olympics in, uh, in the Olympics many years ago. And after she finished um, and won the gold medal in the Olympics, she decided to do something different. So she decided that she was going to swim the English Channel. Now, the English Channel is a lot different than a, a pool, <laughs> which is what mm -hmm. she'd been doing all that time. 
Uh, it's always cold, it's usually rough, and it's salt water. So a uh, very, very difficult swim. The, her first try she got in and she started to swim. She swam for 24 hours. She was starting to cramp, have some real difficulty swimming. And so her coach leaned over the side of the boat and said, you know, it's not worth your life and your health. You should probably just go on and get back in the boat. And Diana wasn't ready to give up. At the 26 hour mark, they said her legs were cramping so bad that she could only use her upper body strength to try to keep herself above water. She had blisters all over her face from the salt. She was having some trouble breathing. So the coach was like, you need to get out of the water and get in the boat. This is just not worth it. So um, Diana and I did do that. She got out of the water, got in the boat. Uh, a little bit later after she'd recovered, Diane and I had discovered that when she got out of the water and into the boat, she was one half mile from the shore. Mm. She, she said later at a press conference that um, in, in, any con, in any water conditions and in any physical condition, she could, she could swim a half mile. Yeah. But she didn't know how close she was. Uh, she eventually did swim the English Channel, but she had to start over. I think that's just a perfect example for stage three and four. That, you know, at the moment um, that you want to get out of the water and get in the boat, that is the moment that you're just this close. So I just want to encourage all of you as we go through this together and as we try to find our opportunities in the middle of all this, um, just stay in the water. You know, stay in the water because there's a lot of good stuff to find there, even if it doesn't seem like it. And <laughs> keep swimming. Keep swimming. And show them, the show them that picture, the one we were filling in, Joe, on the slides. I I'll let this be my goodbye to you. Thank you, Lily, so it's much. A little more, Lily. Before Thank you. I love you. I miss you. <laughs> and there she is. <laughs> 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 Oh, Lily, that's awesome. Yeah. And maybe that's something we had, we had decided we, th we had seen, right? Love it. In there. Yeah. yeah. Make that COVID. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Hey, Lily, Thank that you. picture reminds me of what your daddy said about you. What? Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, Lily, Carol, and I was just saying, what? What are we gonna do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do? Now? Said you say that all the time. What are we gonna do now, <laughs> Daddy? Yeah. I miss your dad, and I miss <laughs> Me you. Too. Too. Well, well I want to do a, a little do. tiny commercial, my friends. If you found <laughs> value tonight, and I'm gonna God will show us that's where we're at. If you're gonna find any value in the change cycle, as you said, Lily just touched on it back in May, and she touched on it again um, for us tonight. And Lily, your website, I have a little bit of your website up here. I just bounced on it earlier tonight. Um, <clears throat> kind of cool if you enjoyed um, seeing what Lily had for you tonight. Let me grab this really quickly. But there's quite a bit on your website that we can actually do. We can learn more um, about, let's see, the change cycle itself. And I was excited to go down here, Lily, and you said there's, mm -hmm. we can learn more about each of the different stages. Right. Right. And, um, also, up on the top of this page, when it says change cycle, right? Is it training formats or is, where do I go to order products? There's, there. if you go under order products, you can actually take an e locator assessment profile for a whopping mm -hmm. charge of $8.95. And Lily, you oh. said it goes in and you, it, you know, you take a change in there and it tells you what stage you're actually in 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 your navigation of that change particularly and then it gives you even more information about the about that stage is that right yeah so when you when you take it uh the electronic one which this is what this is the e-locator then um you'll submit it and then it will and what you'll get back in your email um is where you are in the change cycle it'll tell you uh, a lot about the different stages, but it'll also focus in on the stage that your profile, your assessment said you're in with some ideas about what you can do um, to navigate that stage. So, yeah. yeah. We just want so to leave you with for less than 10 bucks. You can do less that. than 10 bucks. I mean, what do you get <laughs> time on your hands right now for crying out loud? Spend 10 bucks and um, <laughs> learn even more, right? 
And right. before I let you before I let you go, I mean, before I put us back into um into that, how about if you do what we instead of all this wonderful waving that we're so good at now with um with uh with Zoom, why don't you actually unmute yourselves and give Lily some real love with that applause? Yay! Thank you. So I'm not sure I if you all it. have seen um Actually, let me let me do this. Let me let me let me stay professional for just a minute. I do want to uh, I want to invite you, and I want to invite you to invite others to come join us on this Advent series. And Ken, you were wonderful enough to do a little video here uh, last week, just a short video that kind of explains things. But while we have folks online, Jane Ann Murray's here tonight. This is uh, Kim and her children holding goats, of course, because we are sanctuary. Um, they were out one Easter, and they'll be doing our liturgy for the first week, uh, December 1st. And then um, Stedney Phillips, many of you know Stedney and her daughter right now, um, as you said, Cynthia and Eric, um, separated. Stedney is in Louisville, and her daughter's out in California, but they're going to do a liturgy for us on the second night. And... Um, Edie and Mandy couldn't make it tonight, but they and their kids, again, holding goats with goldens. Yes, because we are <laughs> a sanctuary. Sorry if there's a trend here. Um, and then Jane Ann, who has never been to sanctuary yet, but Jane Ann has participated with us. You um, we went camping this summer with us, Jane Ann. I think you won some contests there, some of our photo contests because of your amazing camping opportunity. But when sanctuary on the road couldn't actually go on the road, we took sanctuary on the road online. And um, we had a blast. So this is our lineup for December. And once again, invite your non-churchy friends. It's not going to be overly churchy. It's going to be a little churchy, but it's also going to be community. The big chunk of every night besides um, the enjoyment of the liturgy and the music is also Ken's teaching. And then we'll have a half an hour of, of sharing each night. Um, let's see. Actually, I can go back to this. The first night is going to be uh seasonal traditions and photo share and ken is actually singing that night how some children see him a gorgeous rendition the second week we're going to be doing favorite seasonal food and recipes um kristen if you can't go to somebody's house and eat it you can maybe bring it to us and share it here on sanctuary online uh, <laughs> third night we're going to be doing favorite ornaments and photos and we're going to close with 2020 reflections um family friendly maybe we'll have to see the language and the <laughs> that we use for that and then also some 2021 intentions how to move forward just like you what you shared us tonight lily with how do we turn some of those threats into opportunities how do we take control of the things we can control um, as compared to you know sitting with the things we can't so let me finish off ken i'm gonna um have you grab a three minute video here explaining everything that's coming up and how we've worked on that. I need to stop my sharing for a minute, share it again, optimize my sound. Look at that. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And there you go, Mr. Ken. And I cannot play. So just kidding. <laughs> um, maybe another time. Next week, I promise to show it to you again. Okay. <laughs> Can you deal with that? I was to not show it to them again? No, it's not going to work. It's not going to work right now. But anyway, you can say goodbye. I can try in another way here. <laughs> but I have to stop sharing. Someone uh, tell a Christmas joke. There you go. COVID jokes. <laughs> oh, my jokes are all dirty. I won't. All right, don't, Cindy, not Do it. yet, honey. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut, shut. <laughs> now that's good for you, Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Liquid courage never hurt anybody. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> I'm putting up the website. Yeah, Somebody is. asked for that. Thank you, Lily. Yeah, put that in the chat box while I'm trying to find Ken in here. Nope. Oh. Thank you, Lily. I got it. I have to go out I'm saying goodbye a little early because I'm I'm cooking and I gotta not burn things up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I have it. Here we go. It still does not want to play the media tonight. Sorry, my friends. Okay.
had that rehearsed and it's not going to work. So another time you're going to need to to sign on next week. But again, Lily, thank you so so much. We so appreciate. My pleasure. You thank you for asking me. Sharon, it's good to see all of you. Yeah. Love to y'all. Thank Tony, you. thanks for coming, my friend. Bye, hey, everybody. Peace out. You. Chuck and Peace out. Night. Great to see you all. Night night. Night night. I'm sorry about this, man. It was working this afternoon. Cynthia, if I was there, I'd give you a hug, friend. Bye, Eric. Yep. Take care, Cynthia. Thank you. Thanks, hon. Thanks so much, Cynthia, for sharing. Bye, George. Peace. Love you all.